Good morning. Would you please stand and sing with us? God, we thank you so much for this day, and we thank you very much for the opportunity for us to come into this place and worship you. Lord, we pray today that you would open our hearts and open our minds so that we could receive your message and truly focus on your word. In Jesus' name, amen. And this is the last time we're going to do this song for this month, so if you know it, please shout it out and sing it with us.
Good morning. I want to welcome you to Memorial United Methodist. My name is Joe Kate. I'm the pastor here. We're so grateful uh, that you joined us in worship today. We want to wish you a happy new year. We've got a simple day, simple services, simple afternoon after what I hope was a simple week for you. Um, we'd like to frame our announcements in the five practices of fruitful congregations. We do our very best to live these out and we'll do a better job in 2018 as we considered, uh, continue to think about it. The first of which is radical hospitality. Um, if you look in the back, if you we want to make sure that you know we've got coffee and donuts in the back. We have a security check-in station dead center in the back. We have restrooms here and we have uh, new rocking chairs from Cracker Barrel. If a parent or grandparent who has a child that's just not having it and you want to rock in a rocking chair, you can go back there. If there's not one of those, anyone can sit in them. Uh, as soon as you see somebody coming with a child, you better get up and let them have it. Um, but we're grateful to have those. Uh, we have new bulletins, uh, new bulletin fronts. I hope you noticed the cover. That's the picture from our um, church directory. If you took pictures for the directory and have yet to receive yours, make sure that um, uh, we meet up with you this week and uh, or in the weeks to come and cross off your name. We're going to make sure that everyone who took a picture gets one and uh, then we can give them to anyone. But every email that goes out has a link to the directory um, that you can uh, pull up. If you missed pictures for any reason, uh, if you came since we took them, if you missed them that day, if we made a mistake and missed them, uh, we encourage you uh, in the Sundays in January, we're going to have chances for you to take pictures. We're going to um, lump them all together, put them back in the directory, and the digital version will have it. Uh, we'll print some uh, also for those of you who uh, simply want a printed version. We believe in passionate worship. Whatever we can do to worship as passionately as possible. I have two important announcements. There. One is um, the organ is going to be moved in the sanctuary. That plan is completely done and completed uh, in terms of uh, planning and the bid. The chancel is going to, the seating up there for the choir is going to be expanded. Uh, so for those of you that like to worship in both spaces, I know there's a number of you that do, um, that space is going to be in transition for the next six, seven weeks. We'll still worship there. Um, I, I just may be on the floor like this, which um, I kind of like anyway. And the uh, choir will be down there as well. So you'll see those changes um, coming uh, soon. That's, that's really cool. Um, we believe in intentional faith development, and we're taking a couple weeks off from that. This past Sunday, this Sunday, we'll be right back at it next Sunday, January 7th, with all of our stuff at 5 p.m. We have stuff for children, youth, and adults, and um, while the stuff builds on itself, um, you can come any Sunday and join us and get in the mix. We'd be happy to have you. We believe in risk-taking mission and service. Um, we continue to collect jackets of all sizes. Uh, if you would like to... Um, donate a jacket you can just leave it uh, with us we'll make sure that um, the appropriate group gets it that we get it to people who desperately need it um, in this cold season 
We believe in extravagant generosity. Um, that if you uh, give in an envelope and you have not gotten your box of envelopes for 2018, there in the social hall, you can go um, between this building and um, the sanctuary. You'll see in that open space where we normally take those pictures uh, at the wooden wall, there are books there filled with those, filled with those um, uh, cards. Oh, and the... Um, I'm sorry, the second worship announcement. If you want a poinsettia, um, they are in the sanctuary. You can take it home with you today if you like. Um, and you can do it before the service um, if, if you come to the service and go home. So that's uh, all of our announcements. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for gathering us in this space that we may have a warm space to uh, laugh with one another, to encourage one another, to read the text, to pray, to sing. We ask that you use this space to transform us, Lord, to empower us, to strengthen us, to go out and serve those who do not have this space, to serve those who um, are deeply, deeply sad, deeply angry, deeply broken. Heal us this morning, Lord, that we can be agents of your mercy and your peace. Inspire us this morning, Lord, as we pray the prayer your Son taught His disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So today we're going to talk about worship communities. How many of you have in your lifetime worshipped in more than ten places for a fair amount of time, say more than six months? Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have, but we're not going to raise our hands. Right? They're different, aren't they? Some of them have very different worship. Some of them have very different layouts. Some of them have very different liturgy. Um, whatever it may be, it was a thing that may... Uh, this is something that um, I've learned to um, accept 18 years into ministry. Sometimes it's just the closest to your house. You know, it's just a convenient place to come. I completely get that. That's like uh, uh, the dry cleaners. You know, the closest place I'm going to go there. The gas station, the closest place I'm going to go there. But whatever choice you make, you've seen different things. You've heard um, different types of messages. You've seen a screen. You've seen no screen. Whatever it may be, some of it appealed to you. And I'm guessing some of it was strange to you. I'm going to look at two pictures. This is the church of the nativity in Bethlehem. There's all types of churches all over Jerusalem that are built on amazing sites or um, potentially within uh, a mile or two of amazing sites that say, we've built this church on this site. Um, and as the name uh, says, the nativity, the significance of this church is that it's in close proximity to where Jesus was when he was born and in a manger. Let's look at the next one. This is Royal Mission. This is on John's Island. If you've been to Kiowa or Seabrook, this is about a quarter mile before those entrances. Um, I've been in both of these places. You go back to the um, first one. Had Holy Communion in this place and in a number of churches that were what I would call high church. And the liturgy was... Um, uh, very sophisticated. The words were very sophisticated. And I felt like um, I needed to sit up a little bit straighter and make sure that my <coughs> sleeves were buttoned and be very proper in this sophisticated space because that's what it calls you to do. <coughs> to um, call yourself to a higher place. If you go to the real mission picture, I worshipped here as an intern for nine weeks in college. This was actually um, one of the places that drew me into ministry. This place had worship out in the yard, and it might start up on a Tuesday. 
If you go back to the first one, the minister in that place had very uh, ornate clothing in a very ornate space with a very ornate bulletin. And things went according to the way that they should. If you go to the uh, real mission, Holy Spirit. Now some people might say, you're drawing it up in the dirt. But they wouldn't say that. At Royal Mission, they would say they are completely led by the Spirit. You go back one more time. You might hear Latin in this space. And you might not understand it. You say, I don't, I don't know what he's talking about. I don't, is it good? I don't, I don't know. You go to Royal Mission, they were speaking in tongues. And this is real. I was in a circle with five ladies who were praying over a particular person. And they were going around the horn speaking in tongues. And it came around to me. I promise you. I went. I promise. I promise I did that. The other intern, the other, the other intern went like this. What you doing, buddy? That's real. You talk about as far apart as you could possibly be in your location, in your practice, in your words, but neither of them disconnected from God. Isn't that interesting? Location, the structure that you're in, the style in which you worship could not be any more different. I was in a um, building that was thousands of years old beside a building that was their old space, which was far older. And this is out in the dirt by the creek. And if I gave you the option, which one, we're going to have to go with one of these two styles starting next week, which one do y'all vote for? I think it'd be interesting to see which way you would go if you were to raise your hands in worship. Location, structure, style, purpose is the same. Keep that in mind as we read our text for today. Chapter 22, verse 22. When the time came for their ritual cleansing, in accordance with the law from Moses... They brought Jesus up from Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. It's written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male will be dedicated to the Lord. They offered a sacrifice in keeping with what's stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of dirt, turtle doves or two young pigeons. A man named Sibion was in Jerusalem. He was righteous and devout. He eagerly anticipated the restoration of Israel and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It revealed to him that he wouldn't die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Led by the Spirit, he went into the temple area. Meanwhile, Jesus' parents brought the child to the temple so that they could do what was customary under the law. So your next um, phrase is ritual and the Holy Spirit. People who love the Holy Spirit might think that ritual is not a thing. People who love ritual might think that Holy Spirit is not a thing. What does this text tell you about both of those things? A man who was devout. A man who worshipped in the temple. There is no more high church. There is no more structure. There is no more significant place to these people. It says he felt he was led by the Holy Spirit. Isn't that interesting? Those who have proclaimed about Jesus to Mary and Joseph have been angels, shepherds, prophets, and now they take their young son to the temple. And this guy goes uh, all over the place saying how amazing he is and how amazing it is that he's going to live and serve in God's name. He says he's going to get those who had no previous connection to God. You know how hard it is to do that? No previous connection to God. Most churches gain people who have had some previous connection to God. They just veered off for a little while. 
or they came from another church. He says he's going to draw people with no previous connection to God. He says he's going to draw people who have maintained their connection to God. It's hard to do because he's going to say things that are so different than the worship that these people have experienced in the temple. And in what might be the hardest feat, he's going to gain people who have lost their connection to God. See, no connection to God. I'm interested in what you're doing. I've never heard this before. He did what? Maintaining their connection, yes, I was here. This is a new thing that while I'm here, it's exciting. But lost their connection? Lost their connection means that there's scar tissue. Means that it's going to be hard to fight back. Means that they are looking for a reason to say this is not the right thing and I knew it all along. It is truly difficult to reach people who have lost their connection to God and that's what Simeon says this young man is going to do. Can you imagine hearing that about a relative of yours? Hearing that about a child? Verse 36. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, who belonged to the tribe of Asher. She was very old. After she married, she lived with her husband for seven years. She was now an 84-year-old widow. She never left the temple area, but worshipped God with fasting and prayer night and day. She approached at that very moment and began to praise God and to speak about Jesus to everyone who was looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Mary and Joseph had completed everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to their hometown, Nazareth in Galilee. The child grew up and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and God's favor was on him. See, next phrase is requirements and worship. Sometimes it feels like requirements, doesn't it? Sometimes it feels like something you got to do. Pressure that someone has put on you in order to come, or in order to sit up straight, or in order to give, or in order to serve. It's a thing that I've got to do. I've been in so many churches that had so many different things that were offered to children and youth and in every case there were um, specific things that you had to do in order to participate and oftentimes the parents are thinking well I gotta do what for 8 weeks? I gotta do what for 12 weeks? I gotta do what for 16 or 24 weeks in addition to the things that we're already doing? And it feels like a requirement. What's your energy level? What's your excitement level when it, feels like, when it feels like a requirement? It's limited, isn't it? It says there were requirements and there was worship. It said she showed up every day and prayed. She showed up every day and fasted. I don't know why they have to run up the score on her and say she was old. I don't know why they have to point out that she was 84. I mean, why is that necessary? But I assume one thing we can take from that is um, if, if I make it to 84 and I'm at the temple every day fasting and praying, I'm doing a good job, right? I'm dedicated. This is another person who's completely connected to the temple, completely connected to that way of worship, who is celebrating a young man that is going to take it an entirely different direction. Praising God. The next phrase is um, one of the last things we read in the text. The child grew up and became strong. And you don't think about Jesus growing up and becoming strong, do you? Don't you think of him as already being strong? Don't you think of him as knowing everything that he had to know from day one? Well, that might be right if he wasn't human. If he was some kind of uh, godly thing, divine thing here on earth in the shape of a human. Just looking like a human to trick us. But truly was as powerful as Superman. But he was human. He was human and had to learn. Jesus had to go to temple. Isn't that interesting? 
What if she ever had to straighten Jesus' shirt? My parents, who I love, but for the fact they made me wear a clip-on tie on Sunday morning. I remember that thing clicking in like this. That's probably the childhood trauma that caused me to never wear a, child, a tie again, unless it's a funeral. Sitting like this and wearing a blazer and leaning on the car when I go out in the parking lot after worship, my dad say, don't lean on the car with the blazer on. Oh, okay. Right? <coughs> Will do. But my parents took me. You know how much I cared in the beginning? Not a lot. You know how much I liked going up in front of the church for a children's sermon in front of everyone? Not a lot. You know how much I paid attention to the sermon? Not a lot. Right? I counted how many uh, diamonds there were in the light fixtures hanging from the ceilings. That's real. I don't know what y'all count. Do y'all count cinder blocks? <laughs> y'all look at that ball. It's been a, some after school kid got that up there eight months ago. And uh, I kind of want to bring it down, but I kind of think it's cool that he got it done. Or she. Worship was not as significant to me at 12 as it is at 39. Maybe if I'd been in a different worship, I don't know, maybe. I doubt it. But connection was significant to me. The people who supported me in that church were significant to me. My parents' Sunday school class who saw me every step of the way, who when I went back for homecoming, were all there saying hello to me and pat me on the head and saying, you used to wear a tie like this. <laughs> right? They supported me. The child grew up and became strong because the child went to worship. Because the parents took it seriously to take him, number one. But the people in the church took it seriously to encourage him. You know, you can't always be the one encouraging your children. You can't. Because the stakes are too high. we got so many other things going on and I just begged you to put this shirt on and come up here. I begged you to get out of bed and get here. I begged you to take out the trash yesterday. We can't really have that conversation where I encourage you. But other people can. There's no stakes. You just say, hello, good morning. It's good to see you. And encourage them. It says, Mary and Joseph completed everything. Anna worshipped every day. Do you think there was something special every time? Do you think that they were moved to the point of tears every time that they came on campus? I doubt it. But they came on campus. And the significant thing is something happens that they cannot predict. Because of the power of the Holy Spirit, the power, the encouragement of the people surrounding them, people who are devout and dedicated to raising a young child. This young child would inspire people who loved high church. This young child would inspire people who loved to express their faith freely out in the field. This young child would inspire everyone in between. And you wouldn't believe if we went a 20 mile radius from this spot how many different ways people are worshiping in their spaces. And this child inspired them to do it. Why? In part because parents brought him and in part because the people who were there said, I see something special in this kid. I see something special. So, some of us have the role of bringing people to church, whatever age they are. Some of us have the role of encouraging people who have brought others to church. Every single one of us falls in one of those two categories. And how is it significant? Jesus' own parents did it. People in the temple did it. 
And because they did, Jesus went on from that place to lead people to a truly inspiring worship all over the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you'll stand as you're able and join us in our modern affirmation. This is something that we believe, something that we try to live out. If you uh, would like to read along with us, you're certainly welcome. If you'd like to simply listen, you can do that as well. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all His works, and whose will is directed to His children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of God fulfilled. We believe in the Holy Spirit as a divine presence in our lives, reminding us always of the truth of Christ, our inspiration and strength in times of joy and sorrow. We believe our faith should be apparent in our words of love and acts of service, that the kingdom of God may be a present reality here on earth. You may be seated. Words of love and acts of service. I bet you can reflect on a couple in 2017, a couple of instances in which you pulled that off, and it was amazing. I bet you can reflect on a couple of instances in which you missed the opportunity. Let's go forward. What words of love and acts of service can you offer in this new year to those that surround you? It's now time for our offering. You can give as the plate goes by. You can give um, electronically with instructions in the bulletin. If you are new, we certainly don't expect you to give. You can rely on the generosity of our folks. They're very generous. Would you stand and sing this last one with us?